In our top business story, Emirates Airline will sponsor a 204 million dirham cable car in the city of London, the very first of its kind. The Emirates Airline cable cars will run between Greenwich Peninsula and the Royal Victoria docks and will carry around 2 million passengers each year. The sponsorship is said to be Emirates' largest since its agreement with the UK's Arsenal football team. In a company statement, Emirates President Tim Clark said that the link with this new form of air travel in London is a perfect fit for them and will take off as an iconic landmark for London. London Mayor Boris Johnson described the deal as tremendous news which will act as a vibrant catalyst for the regeneration of East London. The UAE invested over 110 million dirhams into its industrial sector at the end of last year, according to the Minister of Economy, Sultan Mizaid al-Manzuri. He made the announcement while introducing the Industrial Yearbook 2011 that was issued by the Ministry of Economy. He stated that the UAE witnessed remarkable progress in the industrial sector last year. He added that the number of industrial firms registered in the UAE by the end of last year stood at 4,960 companies, which employed over 382,000 workers. The first ever Images Retail Middle East Awards honored the best companies as well as men and women in the retail industry at a ceremony last night. There was a huge turnout of companies spanning all sectors including electronics, jewelry, interior and clothing apparel to name a few. While the global economy may still be seeing a slowdown in some areas, retailers in the UAE and the Middle East continue to express confidence in the region's markets and last night's event was a reflection of the robust industry. It was a huge night for more than 60 retailers in the Middle East region. The glitz and glamour that surrounded the first ever Images Retail Middle East Awards couldn't hide the excitement among the companies. For a change, it was their turn to dress up to the nines and walk the red carpet. According to organizers, through this, they are helping raise the bar for the retail industry in the region that will ultimately benefit consumers. I think it's about really encouraging retail in Middle East. I'm sure it will really help their teams and their whole uh, overall imagery. Retailers will use this as a better imagery proposition. And it's a great thing. Landmark Group dominated the ceremony. They bagged six awards out of the 23 categories, including the most admired marketing campaign of the year, most admired fashion retailer, most admired store design, and most admired retail company of the year. According to them, this is all owing to their united team and a goal to put consumers first. I think so that is what, because we, I think so we understand our customers' needs and, and we are not very greedy. We try to as much as possible to look after everybody. Uh, the young uh, at heart, the young Arab consumer is my consumer and I think so we looked after them very well and I think so that's the reason why we are successful and I hope we will only deliver better product, better quality, better experiences. Meanwhile, the one took home three awards, including the most admired personality of the year for its founder, Thomas Lundgren. According to the businessman, their secret to success is simple, and retail isn't just about selling. I think our whole company has a personality, and I think that most retailers don't have a personality. So I think that's really our big secret. And all our people working together in a really nice atmosphere and everybody wants to do a change in the world so it's not just retail selling another thing it's actually to do good too at the same time danube group proved to be a dark horse winning two awards according to the group the win was unexpected since they are relatively new to the retail industry however two years of hard labor and innovation proved its worth we feel fantastic it's only been two years since we entered into the retail industry and we've already backed two awards. I mean, what more can you ask for? And this will definitely be an inspiration to work harder and to go up there, definitely. With all the awards given away and the party over, all these hardworking men and women will soon return back to work. According to them, while the recognition is important, their most coveted prize remains the same. Your loyalty and purchase. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. With that, let's now look at today's stock market performance here in the UAE and the entire Gulf region.
And in our world business news, newly released minutes of the Federal Reserve's most recent meeting in September when Operation Twist was unveiled, read that Fed officials discussed a range of tools to ease monetary policy, with considerable dissent about how much action, if any, to take. Among other things, the U.S. Central Bank considered a fresh round of quantitative easing labeled QE3, a program of bond purchases to ease financial conditions. Minutes from the September meeting show that while there was some dissent, most members agreed that additional monetary policy was warranted. In the end, they decided to do the Operation Twist to buy longer-term treasuries while selling shorter-dated bills and notes to put more downward pressure on long-term interest rates and by that stimulate the economy. We have Bruce Powers, Head of Research at Trust Securities, here with us to discuss the issue. Welcome, Bruce. Hi, Lynn. Good to see you. Now, do you think the central bank in the U.S. will give in and in fact, introduce a third round of quantitative easing, or what other options are there? Well, we have growth expectations for the U.S. economy declining recently, and unemployment has not moved at all. So I think if that stays the same or gets worse, then there's a good chance that they will eventually launch QE3, where they go into the market and they buy housing and government debt in order to provide additional liquidity to the system. The problem is that even with over two years of very cheap money, it hasn't done enough to stimulate sustainable growth. Consumers and corporations have not been so much focused on growth as they have been on lowering debt levels and risk exposure. Um, the problem, or the risk, I should say, with the QE3 is that it could raise inflation and inflation expectations. But there's only so much the Fed could do with their benchmark interest rate still at a very low quarter percent. Let's turn our attention to the earnings season that kicked off this week with Alcoa, the third quarter earnings season. Yeah. Now, they painted quite a gloomy picture. Is that a bad omen for the rest of the reporting season? Well, I think it's still a little too early to tell. There's only about 5% of S&P 500 companies that have reported. But Alcoa is an important uh, indicator of the industrial economy, their biggest customer being the auto industry. If we look at uh, analyst earnings ex uh, estimates for S&P 500 companies, excluding the financials, they're expecting about 14% growth for this quarter. Now what investors will be watching, in addition to individual company earnings, is the number of earnings surprises to the upside versus the downside in order to give some indication of the outlook. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for your insights. And from Thank the you. U.S., we turn to China. China's Customs Bureau warned of severe challenges for the country's export sector as Chinese exports rose the least in seven months, giving the government even lesser incentive to let the yuan appreciate against the dollar. Both exports and imports grew less than expected, leading to a September trade surplus that fell the second month in a row to $14.5 billion. The data provided some ammunition for Beijing, which is under pressure especially from the U.S. to let its currency rise and thereby reduce global trade imbalances. The U.S. Senate approved a bill on Tuesday aimed at forcing Beijing to push the yuan higher. The bill's supporters argue it would reduce the $250 billion trade deficit between the U.S. and China. But China feels a rising yuan would hurt its export sector even further. Therefore, no major shift in Beijing's monetary policy is expected. Before we go, here's a quick overview of the oil, precious metals and currency markets. And after that, we have the day's sports news for you.